This review covers the Ratfink Fruhoff beaded panel van. It's a skill level 3 kit, a 125 scale unit, a companion kit from AMT number 1292. Now the Fruhoff beaded panel van and the International Harvester Transtar, the CO-4070A, was uh, also produced in uh, a kit number 1291. And they were seen, uh, those two units, hauling loads all over the country in the 60s and 70s. And uh, AMT has released two separate kits with rat fink graphics to make a real showstopper of a set when paired together. And if you're interested, a link for the tractor kit review is listed in the description below. The rat fink character was created by the talented Ed Big Daddy Roth, who was a custom car builder and graphics artist, and his creations are duplicated here for us for an awesome model duo. The kit has 140 parts molded in white, clear, clear red, clear amber, and chrome. And it comes with black vinyl tires, rat fink water slide decals, and movable sliding suspensions. The rear doors of the trailer are also functional and it has paint call outs as well. First released back in the early 70s, this new boxing was re-released in 2021 and is still available online at auction sites and local hobby shops. The dimensions when you're down are 19 and a quarter inches long by 3 and 3 quarter inches wide and 6 and a quarter inches high. Then you have to add 7 inches to the length if you display it with the tractor. Here are some of the water slide graphics for this kit and they are amazing. Uh, the colors are absolutely beautiful and the register is great. I, I don't think that uh, you could ask for more for a custom uh, beaded van than this decal set. They come off the uh, paper very easily. The thing is you will need some setting solution to get them to adhere to the, uh, you know, conform to the features that are on the beaded sidewalls of the track of the van. Construction starts with the suspension and You'll need to make sure that you get all of the pieces uh, put together properly as far as alignment goes. Make sure that they all are flush and fit fully into their uh, places where they are, you know, supposed to be positioned. I recommend that you use some slow setting glue to make sure that alignment is correct and all the parts are fully seated. Here's a look at that uh, suspension piece to start with and I also suggest that you put it together before paint so that you get maximum adhesion. Now gather up these pieces, the axle housings, the axles and the atten attentive pieces here that go into that rear suspension uh, and these will be added in next. Oh, oh by the way if you need to refer to the instructions they, uh, they are at the full set is at the end of the review. And so here's a look at that construction after it has been assembled and painted and I left some of the parts chrome as uh, they may be on a, on a show truck like this. Now we'll get these pieces out, the rails here that will be um, attached to the uh, bottom of the uh, box there and uh, this will serve as the slide rails uh, along with some other pieces for uh, continuing the construction to add the suspension. And so here's what that uh, suspension looks like on the slides um, along with the uh, mud flaps in the back there and um, uh, some of the attentive parts and uh, it's a pretty unique design and it's duplicated here in the model so uh, have fun with that. Now also note that um, the locking bar is just a thin piece of plastic which could easily break or come off. Um, so you might want to add a little reinforcement here, either a piece of wire or maybe uh, another lamination of some thin plastic to give it a little strength. And next we'll get these pieces out, the uh, air hose and the, uh, uh, the uh, brackets, uh, etc. that are added to that uh, rear suspension and put those into place. Now you can get a close-up look of the air hoses attached there on the right side and uh, the slide back and forth there for the suspension unit. Uh, it's a pretty nifty arrangement and it works well. Now we're going to add some of that front suspension work, the, uh, the uh, supports uh, with the support wheels. And uh, by the way, the support wheels will be uh, painted uh, lime green like the, um, like the van is. We jumped a little uh, ahead here with the box already built underneath, but uh, that's a mock-up and uh, we're going to show you, of course, the, uh, the large crank and those uh, support wheels uh, and how they'll look when you're done. 
Uh, next, we'll add the upper coupler unit and uh, the kingpin. And uh, note there's ejector pins on some of the pieces, and uh, mine had a little bit of uh, grease that uh, came along with that, so make sure that you clean the parts well before you use them. So that piece is added there to the, uh, the lower section, and um, you can see what it looks like when it's installed here. The tires are pretty nice. They've actually got some decent tread and uh, some markings on them. But um, you can also add a little authenticity to them by, you know, just sanding the tread area uh, against some uh, fine sandpaper, like a 220 grit on a flat surface to give it a little roughness. Now the inner wheels, outer wheels, they're pretty obvious. And then the trim rings, these go together pretty well. But there's also, of course, the center part uh, because these are dualies, so they connect together. And note that we've used some of the beautiful purple color that accent the uh, box as well uh, and really set the model off. So with uh, the lower portion done, we're going to start constructing the box. And basically that's done upside down. Uh, but I caution you to use you know, some slow setting glue and make sure that everything gets aligned and fully fitted and fits together properly all along the length. Uh, and then I would put some bandage on it to, or uh, rubber bands around it in different places to make sure that it stays square and that will make sure that the uh, doors will function properly. And speaking of doors, you see the two here? Now those um, <laughs> those get decals placed over both of them in some cases uh, and that means they need to be split uh, so that the doors will open. Now here's what I did. I put those doors on a piece of cardboard, uh, put them together and taped them in place and then I added the decals to them, of course after paint. And then I carefully, once they had dried thoroughly, split the decals uh, with a hobby knife right down the center so that they would open with separate doors. So that's one way to get the decals on uh, and make sure that they're aligned and uh, they look right. Well, there you have it. Your model is complete. And what an impressive looking model it is. Uh, with those special graphics, uh, that really that's really something different. And of course you've got... Uh, the crazy looking uh, bogey wheels there and the purple stripe and wheels which just happen to be an exact match for the colors that were used on the uh, tractor. So we'll show you uh, a picture of that and if you notice that is quite an impressive model kit. It's going to turn heads and if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Ryder's Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Ryder's two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. You'll find aisles and aisles of scale model kits, RC models, model rockets, Warhammer Gaming, and railroading products. Stop in at Riders today and tell them Doug sent you.